Good morning, everyone. I see that uh, people are still joining in, but uh, I also see it's 9.30. So I wanted to just introduce today with a little bit of a uh, little bit of a review of last time, not a review, but just mentioning what we talked about last Sunday. We talked about please, because we're talking about please and thank you. And so last Sunday was please meaning prayer. We talked about prayer because that's how we say please to the Lord. Amen. Help me, please help others. And that, that, so we focused on prayer as an asking of the Lord, saying, please, Lord, be with me in my life, and so on. And, and uh, so that was saying, please. Today, we're going to be talking about thank you, saying th please and thank you. And on uh, Thursday at 10 a.m., this, this Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, we'll have a, a service that is heavy on what people want to say. So you can bring a reading that you love that has to do with gratitude or uh, uh, or bring something you want to say that you're grateful for in life and that's what the focus will be on thanksgiving day on the same link so but uh today is also about thanksgiving we're going to have some familiar songs that have to do with thanksgiving that marette will be doing uh, many of you may know um she'll be singing them if you have if you know them at home go ahead and sing but we won't be synced in doing that. So mostly we'll be uh, listening to Marada. We can sing at home if you want to. If your volume's on, you might not be synced with each other, but that's okay too. I just want to do uh, start by touching a little bit on last week because there's something I forgot to say. Uh, we we're talking about prayer and uh, prayer, thinking about ourselves, prayer, thinking about others. You see here, I have a, a painting of a cardinal in a tree. Yesterday, last week, early in the morning, when I was going over my notes at home for the service about prayer and asking the Lord and so on, I was standing at a window and a, it was still dark out and a cardinal came and landed on the closest branch coming toward the window and the light from the window was lighting the cardinal. And here's this cardinal turning this way and that. Beautiful, beautiful contrast with just this, the light from the window hitting it, not outdoor light yet. And uh, just a beautiful image of the cardinal. And it just flitted around for me and then went away. A little bit later, standing at that window, getting some coffee, waiting for some coffee to get ready. and. Uh, I saw a cardinal in the, on a distant tree because it's just this beautiful flaming dot of red. And so you can tell it's a cardinal landed on a more, much more distant tree. And there was this cardinal. And now it's lit from the light out there. And I watched it for a little bit and it flitted around and then went away from me. And I'm thinking, wow, I had a couple of cardinal visits this morning. And it made me think about, here I was thinking about uh, prayer, about to talk about prayer. I was going to say it last week. And I really felt like this was something that right away my thoughts were about prayer, internal prayer, the prayer represented by a cardinal at the window lit from the room where I was. That's, that to me was about internal prayer to the Lord. And the cardinal out there in the light of the sun, the morning sun, and then flying away from me, felt like it was about prayer for others. And it's it's the same thing, a cardinal, but it's it, it just seemed to, to me to read both ways about something internal and something put out there. So I just wanted to share that image with you. There's so many things we can say about thank you and about gratitude and thanks. Uh, we have so many places that refer to thanks in the Lord's word, such as 
Psalm 95. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God. Or Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. It just said we're his sheep. And it says enter his gates, that's a sheepfold. And into his courts with praise, be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. So here's that familiar psalm that says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, but it mentions goodness and mercy. The Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. Well, if you look at other psalms, there are five or seven psalms that all start with the same exact words which is, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy is forever. Especially Psalm 136, because it says, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures or is or lasts forever. And then it says, oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. And, and the, that second line, for his mercy is forever, occurs 26 times in that psalm because it was repeated by the people. Oh, give thanks to the Lord God of gods for his mercy is forever. And it's just a beautiful psalm, which could, was like a song. And it was, re, it was a responsive song of David. And so, but that's about goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. And so, what is mercy? Mercy, we're taught in the Third Testament, the, de the new church given def definition of mercy is love grieving. Misericordia is mercy. Misere, grief. Cordia, the heart. Love grieving is, is mercy. And the Lord knows our state. He knows that, as the other psalm said, it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We didn't invent our life. We didn't think up, let's live now. And I'm in charge of all life. This is something that Every single day we know comes from the Lord himself. This is a gift from the Lord just to be created. He is the maker, the creator, the former of our lives. That is the Lord. And so when we thank the Lord, we're acknowledging the Lord. When we give thanks to the Lord, we're acknowledging that all things are from him. Because we are incapable of making up all the things we experience in life. We're just not the ones who started all this and, and who sustain all of this. There's only one who can do that, and that is God, the Lord. And so we acknowledge this, our smallness when we realize the bigness of the Lord, not just how he's omniscient and all powerful and all wise to do these things, but that he knows each one of us. He knows each one of us, and that is his mercy enduring forever. He's with not only the entire human race and all of creation, but he is with you. And he knows your heart, and he knows your thoughts. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there's any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. These are things to be grateful for that the Lord is most present with us. And so I wanted to read to you 
what it says in Arcana Celestia. Ninety-two eighty-six. It's talking about three times, thou shalt keep a feast unto me, in the year. It says that this signifies the persistent worship of the Lord and thanksgiving on account of liberation from damnation. The persistent worship of the Lord and thanksgiving. And it says down further, regeneration is liberation from hell and introduction into heaven by the Lord. That's what regeneration is. Being removed from troubles of hell, evil and falsity in our lives and entry into heaven in our minds and hearts. And so it signified worship and thanksgiving, the three feasts on account of regeneration. And it says that worship, it says later in the same passage, persistent worship and thanksgiving are the chief things of worship, are the chief things of worship. And they are to continually endure. Wow, persistent worship, persistent thanksgiving. And so that's just an image of, you know, we have the, this idea of the three feasts of Israel. And, you know, there are times when we set aside a time, particularly Thanksgiving day, when we acknowledge the Lord, and when we pray to the Lord, we're acknowledging him, we're asking, and we're thanking him as well in the same, same moment. But this is just to remind us, every moment of every day, we can we be persistently thankful to the Lord. We'll talk a little bit more about this in terms of gratitude. Thanksgiving, but gratitude. Gracias. Gratitude. Same thing, being thankful, thanksgiving, but the sense of gratitude. The word grace is from the Greek charis or karatos, from which we have the word charity, but it's also the Latin gratia. Think of that, the root G-R-A-T, and we have being grateful, gratitude, gracias, gratis, something that's given freely. And we say grace when we're thanking that uh, meal. And let's say grace. That is all about this word gratitude has to do with the grace of the Lord. In other words, the things that he gives us freely. The Lord just gives us our life. The Lord is always most present in our lives, drawing us toward him. And we can acknowledge that and be grateful for his grace. And then it's many times the Lord is talked about in terms of grace. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, full of grace and truth. John 1. Also in John 1, the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. When, he, when the Lord read from scripture in Nazareth, it says, all bore witness to him and marveled at the words of grace, which proceeded out of his mouth. And in our Apocalypse Explained, it says, He's, the words that he spoke are called words of grace because they are acceptable, grateful, and delightful. And so this is the Lord keeping us safe giving freely of his life to us. And in our pockets revealed, Swedenborg wrote, Gratia Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, cum omnibus vobis, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, amen. And so 
the word grace is used quite often. And it's about what is freely given. And we have the word gratitude from it. And now I want to just shift to one thing before we, uh, this is going to be something I, I, I wrap this concept up with. And it's because I love this passage. I, and you don't normally think of this passage I'm going to read from. It's, it's just nine verses. You don't normally think of it in terms of thanksgiving, but I, a, a, a prayer and, and gratitude. But I want to read this because to me, it's, this, is the, this embodies the Lord God's answer when we pray to him. And this is the end of the story of Noah and the flood. A long, huge story of, of, about the flood of evil and falsity that went over all over the earth and that the Lord saved out the remnant above evil and falsity in the human, in the human condition, saved us out, saved the human beings out. And, and that from that moment on, there's a gratitude for salvation. And But this is so much about God's answer. And in this, these nine verses in Genesis, the word covenant, nine verses, is mentioned. Well, let's see if you can count them, if anybody would like to. How many times will I say the word covenant, which means a mutual agreement? And God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, as for me, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you. Think about repetitions in this other than the word covenant. The birds, the cattle, every beast of the earth with you, of all that go out of the ark, every beast of the earth. Thus, I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant, which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The water shall never again come to destroy, to, uh, never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. The rainbow shall be in the cloud and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. And God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. What a beautiful passage. That passage says the word covenant seven times. It also says the word earth, which means the church, which means you, seven times. It says me, my, I. This is the Lord speaking. He says my covenant between me and you, me and you. I set my bow, covenant between me and you. He says, he refers to himself in this. This is his answer to prayer 15 times in nine verses. Living creature four times, flesh four times, rainbow three and sign. This is a sign, which is the rainbow three times as well. Six times referring to the rainbow as a sign. Remembering twice. And establishing, making, I establish, I make five times. That's just, these are very frequent things, and there's more in, in just the nine verses. And I'm saying that because this is a profound passage of nine verses following the flood where the Lord is stating his answer. Because Moses prayed to him when they came out, the Lord says, Take the animals out of the ark onto the land. And he made an altar and made sacrifices to the Lord. And the Lord immediately after that says, I will never do this again. I will always protect you. 
And that is just so profound that the Lord is giving us his answer. And that it's an amazing thing also to realize when we pray to the Lord, you can kind of picture beautiful colors of his answer. It's just, you know, you think about this sign of a rainbow that occurs when there's been a storm, generally, when there's rain, you can't have a rainbow without water droplets in the sky and the sun coming out again, hitting them. And so there's an arc always opposite the sun. If the sun is low in the sky and it's been raining and, it's, and the sun is breaking out, look in the opposite direction of the sun for the rainbow. That's, you never look toward the sun for the rainbow. You look away from the sun for the rainbow because that's, that also to me is very symbolic that the Lord is making his covenant with us. And we're the ones away from him he, that, he's, that his light is going toward. And there are all the beautiful colors of the rainbow on the other side of where the source of light is in, in the dark clouds among the rain. So it's, it's such a beautiful picture of how when we are in times of trouble, right now we're dealing, everybody's dealing with the increase of numbers and this pandemic that's worldwide and we're reading these things and listening to these things and watching these images and it can just you know there's some and other things that happen in our daily lives that aren't anything to do with that somebody in the family gets ill things like this happen or you know somebody passes away that we love life just keeps doing these things but you know the lord is still telling us i'm with you i will always be with you and it's, it's a very comforting thing to think about the Lord's promise of the rainbow in our lives. It's, uh, you know, the rainbow has become a symbol of inclusivity. And we know that today, LGBTQ, Jesse Jackson led the Rainbow Coalition to, about multicultural participation in the in election process. There was uh, a rainbow girls thing, it was a Masonic auxiliary international order of the rainbow for girls taught leadership good citizenship to young women in the 16th century the rainbow was a symbol of german peasants uprising against feudal lords it just we can find so many times in history that the rainbow has been used as a symbol of hope and truth and inclusivity the, the multiple colors and that's our lives in the sight of the lord William Wordsworth wrote, my heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when my life began, so is it now I am a man. So be it when I shall grow old or let me die. All about the rainbow. And we all know the little song that says, why are there so many songs about rainbows? What's on the other side? Rainbows are visions. They're only illusions. And rainbows have nothing to hide. Someday we'll find it. The rainbow connection. The lovers, the dreamers, and me. And uh, that's just a beautiful little song. And we know it because Kermit the Frog <laughs> sang it. But it's beautiful. And, it's a, and I'm talking about this because, you know, I, I like how this story was an answer from the Lord about prayer and the gratitude of Noah and his family as they came onto dry land. And that's why I, I, I love connecting this story of the Lord's promise to all people in these short nine verses and the symbol of the covenant that's mentioned seven times in nine verses, the establishment of the relationship between infinite God and the human race. And that's the Lord, the divine human, establishing a mutual relationship, a covenant. And that is something we can be persistently thankful about as we're taught in that passage from Apocalypse Explained. Persistent gratitude is a, a, an essential of our worship. Let's bow our heads in prayer. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance and feed them and lift them up forever. Amen. The Lord
Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Grace be unto you, and peace from him who is, and who was, and who is to come, the almighty and everlasting God. Amen.